And now that fix is head to Machu Picchu which has lower elevation to help your body climatize. So with backpack and camera, that is where I'm going next. The more adventure way is hiking. We made it here to the Kitabamba station. Now it's time to find the bus that goes to Santa Maria. The 10 minutes taxi ride from the city center to the station costs around 7 souls or $2. And the local bus to Santa Maria costs around 20 souls or $6. I recommend you leave early as this will be one of the many rides to come. Now there is a half soul departure tax or terminal fee. So that lady is actually uh, checking at one to make sure they pay for the terminal fee. Not long after the ride begin, you'll be welcome to a world of real life shopping channel. No cable TV subscription required. First round. Apparently it's a guy well, mira, la señora me dice sell uh, some stuff here. Second round, fresh fruits, vegetables, bread, and other stuff. Honestly, I felt like this is like a shopping channel. <laughs> but like, every few stops, people come on and try to sell you stuff. When you're on this bus, be prepared to look out the window and see like really sleep stoves and uh, it's really scary. On the upside, you get to see some of the most beautiful Peruvian natural landscape. So, be brave. So we reached uh, Santa Maria right here. And the next thing we need to find is a collectivo or a taxi to take us to Santa Teresa. When now he says for 40 he would leave uh, hey, at the moment. But... The driver will wait until the car is full unless you're waiting to pay for the empty seats. I suggest you not wait if you're arriving in the afternoon as it gets dark early and it can be dangerous to track at night. And don't be surprised if you need to make room for any human cargoes at the back. Don't be mad. And if you're nice to a proud Peruvian driver, he even stopped to show you some scenic viewpoint overlooking the canyon. So our Cartivo driver actually wanted to show off a very proud jewel of Santa Teresa, which is the Cucumaya Hot Spring. As you can see over there, these are all hot water coming out from the volcanoes. From Santa Teresa, we need to take another mini bus to Hydroelectrica. After 15 minutes of waiting in the van, I decided to pay the extra seat on a smaller car. And being on a rush, I forgot my <laughs> tripod. But there's no time to go back. The new driver offered to get it for me and leave it at the Peru Rail office. This is it. So we're going to start walking from here. And by the way, that's my travel buddy for the day. I also strongly recommend you meet some new friends and pair up for the hike to help each other. By the way, meet David from Germany, who will be my cameraman and translator. So we can walk along this track and it will take us directly to Machu Picchu. Also remember, this cheap and adventurous way involves some danger. Therefore, do it at your own risk. So be warned and watch out for passing trains. You also need to look out for gaps. Hello. Hello. So as you can see, this is pure darkness, darkness right now, honestly. So my advice to everyone is, please start your journey as early, as early, as early as you can. So it is 7-11 right now, so we approximately walk three hours to get here. So welcome everyone to Alca Calentes. We are at the foothill of Machu Picchu. It's time to get our tickets before the office closed down. Follow me. Yes, the first thing you should definitely do is get your Machu Picchu tickets. It's located right by the Alcoa Calentes Plaza de Armas. The square is dominated by a foundation with a statue of nine mighty Inca of Cusco who transformed this region into an Inca Empire. Many archaeologists believe that the famous Inca site of Machu Picchu was built as a state for the Machu Cudi. So this is where you get your tickets and remember they only accept in souls and no credit cards. If you're smart enough, I strongly advise you to get one of these guys. Go to your university, you get it free. And guess what? Half price. Yay! So I'm filming at Machu Picchu. I'm staying at a hostel New Day. It's a really, really comfortable hostel. This is a small family-run budget hostel that offers free breakfast, Wi-Fi, and variety types of rooms. Right down there is Plaza de Amis, and along the way there's actually a great list of restaurants that's really well priced. I am not kidding. And everything can be bargained. So from up there, 
we will offer a full meal for 25 souls with drinks and stuff. As we walk towards this way, the price starts to come down. 20 souls, and then 15 souls, 12 souls or free drinks and stuff. We got one that off actually got in the end, got, gave us the food for 12. And then we got this really good looking food here. So to start off our dinner, we're gonna have a filled avocado. So with cheese on top, inside is filled with beans. Excellent, really fresh by the way, and I can tell. This is grilled trout with wings, and what's that? I is think it? she said it's beef here. Oh, okay. Four, four dollars. Like four dollars, I don't think I want to complain. It's pretty, I think it's pretty good value, what do you think? Yeah, like with the starter and our dish, and we will get dessert as well like yeah dessert's coming so stay tuned for those who complain about the prices here come to near the stadium and there's a food stall and you can get some pretty decent deals so this is um <laughs> pancake with honey on top so let's give it a shot i'm, I'm eating a small one by the way because i need to lose weight actually it's really good there's meat on the stick pastries barbecue potatoes and the good old american french fries and hot dogs <laughs> it's also time to stock up on some natural sugar so tomorrow's hike once again remember to bargain there is apparently a hot spring up there but my personal review are a little mix all right right now it's 4 30 and we just left our hotel room and we are going to do the manly thing is that is hiking all the way up to Machu Picchu Yes, there is an easier way to get up the mountain. So for those of you who don't want to walk up like us, we're up for a challenge. But you can always do the lazy way and pay extraordinary amount of money for a half hour ride up the mountain. So this is a line to go up to Machu Picchu. They don't open until like 5 in the morning. So if you're thinking about like leaving super early, forget it. So you're going to be up lining up for hours and not do anything. Rather get a good night of sleep be filled up with a nice breakfast and then come down. <laughs> this is truly an hour and a half grueling hike, not walk in the park. So make sure to bring lots of snacks and water. <laughs> so over there it says 75 more steps. Let's just hope that is true and that's not some prank we get there. All right, David. What's the bad news? I think we got pranked here because here it says lol and there it says 74. Alright, where's a refund office? <laughs> Holy shoot! Are you kidding me? So finally we are here and uh, here's the lineup. This is a hell of a popular attraction for sure. By the way, our climb is not over yet. There's two mountains which you can climb. Huayna Picchu and Machu Picchu, Montana. Both are about hour to two hours long. Huayna Picchu is popular and tickets are sold out month in advance. So, we opt for the second option. Yeah, and what are we gonna do? We're going to climb up Huayna Machu Picchu. Hell yeah. It's the mountain next to Machu Picchu. So be a man. <laughs> and drink your protein shake. <laughs> 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 you said it takes about two hours to reach the top. But, I got to the top right now, less than 22 minutes. Welcome to Wine Up Pichu, the peak of it. Just joking! Ha ha ha! So, right now I'm soaking wet because it's rain. It's raining really bad. My friend David, who is, is hiding from the rain, and asked me to keep going because I have my varsity suits on. And be sure to listen to what the sign said, like this one. And guys, please, no hiking boots from Walmart. Alright, so one thing I do want to emphasize to everyone that safety comes first. If you need to slow down, slow down because high altitude, you might end up getting hypoxia. means less air, which can end up um, messing around with the brain. Second thing is, as you can see, this is really narrow slope. slope. If you fall, trust me, there is no possible here. So, safety first. I don't want any of my viewers come home in a body bag and I mean it. I believe this is one of my final step up. So I think so. Oh yeah. Actually few people here. So we made it here. Two hours and fifteen minutes. Uh, the rain really stopped us down, but we made it. The full 3061 meters. And I, I if I can do it, you can do it. 
So this is not my first expedition here in Machu Picchu. It's actually my second time. Last time I climbed the Huayna Picchu. And so I do also have a view from there. So for those of you who wonder uh, how that looks like, here it is. Can you call me a taxi? <laughs> By the end, I'm so exhausted and there's only one question in my mind. Can you call? So I'm on the way back down right now and I ask everyone to be very careful because after a rain like this, it can be very slippery. Another thing is, there's no problem with my camera. It's also very foggy, so make sure you watch your steps. Basically on the way down, when the rain stops and the weather clears up, you actually get lots of viewing sites like this. So just make sure you take some time to really enjoy it and seriously. Finally we made it. And so if you're going to come here to Machu Picchu, you might as well just do it. But most likely you're not going to come here twice. The Machu Picchu's elevation is 2,430 meters and built in the height of the Incas in their classical style with polished dry stone wall. Most archaeologists believe that it was built as a state for the Inca Emperor, but it's often mistaken as a lost city of Incas. So I'm standing right in front of a magnificent Machu Picchu. It was built around 1450 and was abandoned about 100 years later. Now, its purpose is still debatable. There's many theories. Over the centuries, the surrounding jungle overgrew the site, and few outside the immediate area know of its existence. In 1911, American historian, explorer, and lecturer from Yale University, Heron Benham traveled the region looking for the old Inca capital and was led to Machu Picchu by a local farmer. Benham brought Machu Picchu to international attention and organized another expedition in 1912 to undertake a major clearing and excavation. It was declared as Peruvian Historical Sanctuary in 1981 and a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 and voted as one of the new seven wonders of the world. The site is roughly divided into an urban sector and agriculture sector and then into upper town and lower town. The temple are in upper town and the warehouse in the lower town. Even though Machu Picchu is only located 80 kilometers away from the Inca capital Cusco, uh, Spaniards never found this place and that's why it's still preserved to today. So one of the significance of this site is its craftsmanship. I mean, those stones are really large. We still have many theories on how they got here and how they craft the stones with a tool they had back in 1450. There's many theories, but none of them are concrete, like these stones. It's also nice to meet some new friends, or new type of friends. And this is where you can get close and personal with llamas, the national animal of Peru. Look how cute he is. Wait, where are you going? Wait, wait, uh, aren't we supposed to be friends? Yo, yo. Okay, maybe not. It's time to go back to Tinder then. Hey, maybe not, but try again. Remember, being a responsible visitor means we leave here with amazing experience, memories, and photos to share, but not take away any artifacts regardless how small they are. After conquering Machu Picchu, it was time to decide how to get back to Santa Teresa. I visit Peru Real office here to see if they can check if my tripod is indeed in the office in Santa Teresa. With a positive answer, I was on cloud 9 and bought the tourist price ticket for the next scheduled train in the morning to Hydroelectrica. So unlike where the tourists go and board the train at a fancy train station, there's no train station here. So basically, they board right by the tracks. We are waiting for the local train to show up and hopefully it will get us there soon. Our train is coming and here it is. The price is 31 US dollars instead of 1 US dollar for the locals. There's absolutely no way I'm going to hide back with broken boot. So the staff of Peru Rail directed me to the end of the track. My assumption is I will not be able to sit with the locals, which I hope to do. Oh dear, I'm getting a fancier version of the train. On my first expedition, I took a round trip on Inca Rail. That's pretty much of a choice. Wow, this time there's not much of a choice. I had to go back to Santa Teresa to retrieve my video equipment and so I have to take a train from here, Machu Picchu, to Hydroelectric and basically from there take a shared taxi to Santa Teresa. 
I wish I could have able to travel on local cars. They cost about 75 cents versus 31 dollars that Peru force us foreigners to pay. The difference, you know, it's uh, you get leather seats, uh, lock cleaner, uh, uh, free drink, I guess. Now, if you want a comparison <laughs> to Inca Rail, here is a video I shot on my first expedition to Machu Picchu. I am giving, want to give you guys a tour of the Inca Rail train. Big today. Let's go to. That's the view from the cockpit. 